Sister Wives one-on-one -on -one part three includes lies, some revealing comments, some great one-liners. Let's get started and talk about it. Oh, goody. Okay, we open up at the picnic table again, and we are rehashing between Suki and Mary. Again, she says, I needed to hear it from him. And she adds, I was not going to guess. I was not going to assume. I deserve to have a conversation and to be told. You did get a conversation. You were told. I told you already. That's it. I'm cutting and inserting a clip from three years ago from this interview. Actually, from the interview, it may be four years ago. This was year two, her second anniversary in Flagstaff. And this is what Cody said to her. I've been waiting for you, honestly. And I'm not coming. I know that. And when he said, I'm not coming, she said, I know that. He told her, and he told her on camera. We are talking in circles. She claims he told everybody else but her. <laughs> Spit it out. Um. What do you say? I mean, at this point, I just, I feel like, uh, okay, Mary, okay. If that's your truth, <laughs> by all means. But Suki does have a good follow-up because she asks that question that we are all thinking. On the flip side, don't you think he's been telling you all along? When Suki says, hasn't he been telling you all along? Mary just gives this random kind of ambiguous answer. Um, it was a really low, uncool way to do it, if that's what he was doing. Yes, I, and I agree with you, and yes, I do feel like that. But because of the commitment that I hold dear, mm -hmm. he didn't hold dear, he holds it dear with Robin. Okay. Yeah. So it appears that this agreement that Cody has with Robin, that he had as part of their covenant when they got married, that Mary just found out about at this picnic table sit-down, and the rest of the world found out at the picnic table sit-down. This seems to be irking Mary a little bit, because she's realizing that he promised Robin all along that if he was not into her anymore, that he would let her know right away so that she could go. And he has not afforded that to Mary for many years. How is their covenant different than the covenant you made with him? Because he fell out of love with me or whatever. I, I only base that off of that scene where he said to her, if we ever, fall if, out we of ever if I ever fall out of love with you, don't string me along or whatever his words were. Did he ever say that to you? No. So in talking about that agreement, we cut to Cody and Suki talking about it. And this is the reason I hammered Robin with our agreement. Robin and I made an agreement that if we weren't in love, that we wouldn't drag each other out, that we would free each other. This is why I hammered the agreement with Robin. So he makes it sound like he was intentional in doing it. This is why I hammered the agreement. I, by hammered it, that means like, you know, it's a reference to I put the hard work in to make sure that this happened. So this was all you? So he pushed hard to see to it that that was part of their covenant and agreement they had. At the same time, while the three other wives didn't have such an agreement with him or understanding, they believed that they were in a covenant, that they were with him till the day he died, because that covenant continues on in the afterlife. This guy's a snake. Oh, this is so messed up. And then she asks the question, did you have this covenant with Mary? And the stuttering and searching for ideas and thoughts and how to make this look good and sound good begins. Cody says, yeah, yeah, like, well, wait. We don't go deep into it because I don't want her reacting in a crazy way. You know, how women are. <laughs> uh, no, no. The agreement, I think, was just I... I remember after Robin and I had the agreement, pause, 
hard swallow. Think. Uh, no, no, the agreement, I think, was just, I, I remember after Robin and I had that agreement, then... Um, I went to the other wives and said, I have this agreement with Robin. And he laughs. They even got frustrated by, like, like, anybody who wants to leave, you're free to go. And then he makes a weird face. And that, that even made Mary mad. I went to the other wives and said, I have this agreement with Robin. And they even got frustrated by, by like, anybody who wants to leave, you're free to go. And, and that even made Mary mad. I have not heard Suki follow up, and I believe his interview was first. I have not heard her ask that question to the other wives. Did Cody, after he made this agreement with Robin, come to each of you and let you know about this? Yeah, follow-up question, that'll work. He makes it sound like he went and told them right away, and I just want to be clear. This is the agreement that we have, and that they were annoyed by it because they didn't want any kind of agreement that says you're free to go. I'm insulted. To the point that it even made Mary mad. I don't believe any of this. Do you believe any of this? I don't believe any of this. I think this is a bold-faced lie, and I would love to have a follow-up question. Maybe it'll come in the next episode. Or not. But if not, huge missed opportunity here. Huge. Suki's talking to Cody some more about Mary, and she says... Did you ever circle back to her and say, hey, listen, I've been thinking about this and I and I sat with this, but I don't know if I could ever really make it work. But I don't know if I can really make it work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, well, wait. We don't go deep into it because I don't want her reacting in a crazy way. Oh. I'll show you crazy. So he's kind of admitting he's not sharing everything? Is Mary maybe not crazy? Maybe he's not coming out? Although in that car ride, he was very clear with her. So unless she interpreted those words to mean something else, like coming for now or, you know, like, ooh, this is so messy and muddy because both of them make no sense. And both of them seem like they're lying. I mean, like, that's just a lie, Mary, that he never talked to you about it. And it's a lie that he didn't put it on camera. I don't know. Is it just me? Honestly, tell me. Am I making too much of this? I'm right there with you. Am I just, like, getting dumber in my old age and I can't figure out what people are saying? I, this is maddening to me. You're not old. He's just frustratingly, annoyingly stupid. Cody goes on to say, I'm not ripping off a Band-Aid, but I know where we're at and I made it clear to her. And what do you mean by that, Cody? You're not ripping off a Band-Aid. So I guess by that you're saying, I'm not saying I'm over you, we're done, leave. I mean, I guess that's what he means by I'm not ripping off the Band-Aid. But I know where we're at, and I made that clear to her. Okay, make it clear to us, Cody. Where are you at? What did you say to her? Was it really clear? Is it even clear to you? Do you understand what you're even thinking? Because over here, not clear. Oh, I am. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I'm a practice one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I know where we're at. Where are you at? And how did you make it clear? So Suki doesn't follow up on that to get clarification on it, but she just goes on to say, why hasn't she received that message? And then Cody throws Robin under the bus. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. He says, because I think Robin and I are giving her different messages. Mm. I have to read it because it's Cody speak. Robin's like, <laughs> Robin's like, hang in there, Mary. Just hang in there. 
And then to me, she's like, you've got to reconcile this. And I'm looking at her like, you, uh, you are not going to get me to do this. Uh, all I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. If he says like one more time, honestly. So he's saying Mary stuck around all this time because it's Robin's fault. And I, I mean, I'm not doubting that at all. Is it 100% her fault? I don't know about that. But I think it's very interesting that he's throwing her under the bus here. Don't you? <laughs> Is it okay that I'm kind of loving this? Mary states again in the interview that she did not know that he was emotionally done. And Suki points out, well, 10 years is a long time to hold on without any answers. Mary agrees. And this is when Mary points out that she's upset that Cody made this sacred agreement with Robin, but not with her. So we cut back to when Suki was talking to Cody, which is interesting because she's referencing something Mary said here. Did Mary go before Cody? Or did they cycle through the women more than once? This is the first time that I've noticed that. Hmm, I'm going to have to keep my eye on it. I love an inquiring mind. So to summarize, Suki says to Cody, well, Mary said you guys had a covenant to imply you had the sacred covenant during your marriage, so she couldn't go. And Cody's response was, the covenant does not include the dissolution of my soul or personnel. I'm sorry, I can't read it with a straight face. Okay, wait, okay, do it again. Okay, here we go. And Cody's response was, the covenant doesn't include the dissolution of my soul. Sorry. <laughs> One more. Okay. The marital covenant does not include the dissolution of my soul or personality. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry to go. What? This is what, what the promise that we made to each other oh, so many years ago. Yeah, that 30 plus years. doesn't include the dissolution of my soul or personality. What does that mean? The dissolution of your personality? The dissolution of your soul? Come on, Cody. I mean, you just can't make this up. Your soul and personality were not dissolved during your marriage. You just didn't like her as much as you liked the new wife. Just say it. But then Cody goes on and gets angrier in his response. And he says, I don't care about the covenant. If you can't get through that, then it's broken. Again, what is that? I don't know. It's anyone's guess. He goes on. It's about this relationship cannot work and those people who are in relationships that cannot work, that are stuck in them because of their faith, their religion, and up in a life of unhappy solitude while the person is right next to them. Okay, I know what he means, but those words together, I'm reading it again. Literally, this is what he said. It's about this relationship cannot work. No, I mean, he said that. It's about this relationship cannot work. <laughs> it's about this relationship cannot work. Not that all relationship. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to read it straight now. It's about this relationship cannot work and those people who are in relationships that cannot work that are stuck in them because of their faith, their religion. And up in a life of unhappy solitude, while the person is right next to them. I think he's trying to say, I believe that I can break this covenant because I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who I don't have a connection with anymore. Because 
that would make me lonely. Oh, no. Actually, Mary would be the one in solitude and loneliness, really. Not Cody. He goes, this is when he's really getting angry, and he adds, I'm not going to discuss it further. Oh. Oh. Cody's in charge now. Cody's running this whole interview. Just so you know, Suki, let's get it straight. Cody's in charge, and he's not going to talk anymore. I'm not going to discuss it any further, he says, because I love her. Here we go again. Make up your mind. I never loved her. When I married her, I never loved her. We were never in love. But I love her. But I'm not in love with her. And now, at the answer to another question later on in the day, I'm not going to discuss it further because I love her. And I love you. I mean, I don't love you. Do, do you, Cody? Really? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you love her, and I don't think you even like her. But I think you love Robin, and you know Robin loves her, or likes her, or at least wants her around. Yes, I wanted her money. So you're trying to sugarcoat all this, so that when Robin sees it, she's not that angry at you. And then he says, and I'm, I'm not going to do what's been done to me by trash talking her, making her seem small. So I feel better about how badly I've treated her. Again, trash talk. <laughs> makes no sense. That makes no sense. First of all, I love how he always has to use the words trash talking. He has no other vocabulary. I mean, my goodness, pick up that thesaurus that you found triangulating in, Cody. <sighs> Trash talk. I, I don't think I've used the term trash talking since I was like in middle school. So, it, okay, so he used trash talk again. And then he used the same line he did earlier in the interview that didn't make sense. I'm not going to do what's been done to me by trash talking her, making her seem small so I feel better about how badly I've treated her. That makes no sense. Making her seem small. So I feel better about how badly I've treated her. If somebody is less than and small, we went through this in a previous video. Oh, hey, 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 don't get angry. If somebody's smaller or less than, then you feel more guilty about how you treated them because they're weak and incapable and need assistance and help. I mean, this is maybe how Cody's head works. I don't know. He basically says, if I make her feel small, then I feel better about how badly I've treated her. That's evil. Maybe we need to define what he means by small. Maybe he doesn't mean that word at all. He means something completely different. That could be to make it make sense in his head. Again, find that thesaurus, Cody. Mary says that before she walked away, she gave him the grace to come back to her. Yes, we know. Over and over and over again for a decade, Mary. And then TLC went back, and now they're kind of talking about Angry Cody that we have seen this season and really the previous season. Angry Cody appeared starting in COVID, really, because COVID is when he started losing control of everything, and he realized that he can't be the dictator of his family anymore. His kids are now growing up and having minds of their own. They're not going to get pushed around. He probably thought he could always control his kids because he controls his wives and they're older than the kids. Probably. So I think 2020 was a huge blow to his ego and he did not know how to handle it. And this is where the anger started amping up. Not to mention the counter in the back in the kitchen that had a million three supplements on it. Hypothetically, he's reacting like somebody who might be on steroids or some sort of stimulant like that. But I don't know. I'm just saying it matches up. So these angry clips are really shown to a bunch of the women and they get to react to angry Cody. So let's talk about angry Cody now. Cody says, the deepest temptations I've had is to stop being good and it's happening to me now, and it's just devastating. Again, we're being very vague. And then he says, I don't want Robin to see this. This is from a talking head that was in a previous episode that they're re-airing. 
He says, I don't want Robin to see this. I don't want her to know how dark I've gotten. How dark, Cody? Suki, Suki, hey, over here. Suki, ask him, how dark have you gotten? What does that mean? What were you thinking exactly? He makes reference to just one situation where he thought in his head, oh, maybe I just want to walk away from everything and go find another young, he called her lover <laughs> again. Lover. It's so creepy. I don't know why that bothers me. I thought of myself leaving Robin and having another lover and looking at this lover and going, I don't love you. I'm in love with another woman. I'm in love with a woman that I left because I was too much a piece of manage the relationship another lover a piece of meat another side piece i don't know really what it is but he wanted to find another woman to have relations with and i guess spend time with and put the whole family aside like walk away from everything or maybe he just wanted to have an affair i don't i, I don't know he doesn't say he just says he talks about wanting to go get another lover but then realized he would just be punishing himself because he loves Robin. What's the big deal? I don't really understand it all. I don't know if his love for Robin is waning. And so that's what made him think about, wouldn't it be nice if I strayed and I did this? I mean, I don't think it's that big a leap to think that a man that's been married for over 20 years and that, that would think about what would my life be like if... I walked away from all of this and all of my problems and all of my headaches and just found a new person and started over again. I don't think having thoughts is that bad. I think we all do. We're all sinful by nature. Nobody's perfect. It's what you do with those thoughts. Do you act on them and you don't? And he didn't. So I'm not quite sure what the issue is here. I need room for my new storyline. He mentions that he shared this with Robin, and she says that she can't make him stick around. And his actions and the things that he's saying are just coming from pain. It's not because he's selfish or a bad person. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Nobody thinks he's selfish. What are you talking about, Robin? He's not a bad person. He's a model husband. <laughs> I love... When Suki says to Mary, does it concern you to hear him talking this way? And Mary's response is this. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> she qualifies it by saying, I want him to be happy, but I can't let it affect me anymore. Good answer, Mary. Good answer. Hello, this is halfway through the video and the best is yet to come. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so right now. Cost you nothing. Just hit the subscribe button. If you have subscribed, hit the like button and leave me a comment. I read them all. Enjoy the second half of this video. This is golden. Robin says he's self-sabotaging and he's trying to even sabotage their relationship. And Suki says, oh yeah, how? And she says, he picks fights with me. Um, pause. She can't think of anything else. Hmm. And then she sighs and she thinks some more. That's it. How does he sabotage your relationship? Um, he picks fights with me. Um, <sighs> he picks fights with her. You know what? Because he had the other wives to pick fights with all these years, and they're now gone. So she's getting the real Cody. Oh, of course. All that stuff that he could push off, all the negativism and the fighting and the complaining that's part of who he is, he gave that to all the other wives all these years. And now they're like, we're done with it. Goodbye. Moving on. We're free. We're free! <laughs> And he's like, what do I do with who I am in this? I like to complain. I like to pick on things. I like to control. Robin. And so she's getting it now. She thinks he's trying to sabotage. No, he's just being Cody, Robin. He's just being Cody. Really? Yeah. So because Robin couldn't come up with another thing besides he picks fights with me, Suki says, over what? 
and she just says dumb things. Again, no details. She wouldn't say what they fight about. Dumb things. Okay, Robin. So if they're dumb things, he's not trying to really sabotage your whole relationship, right? So are you lying about the dumb things? Are they really bigger things? Or are you making way too big a deal over the fact that you guys now have little fights and he picks little fights with you? Get over it, Robin. Welcome to marriage. This was golden. Okay. Robin then says that she is mourning the bomb that went off in the family. I'm not, I'm not dramatic. And Cody is angry about the bomb that went off in the family. The bomb that went off, she's mourning the bomb and he's angry about the bomb. You know what the bomb is? The bomb is Christine leaving, right? But let's just point out for a minute that that bomb had been ticking and ticking and ticking for years. And there was an a countdown on it so she could see like, this thing is going to explode. It's going to blow. And then eventually it did. And Christine left and they were like, oh, the bomb went off. I can't believe it. Christine left. How could she do that to us? She's so rotten. She's so mean. She's such a bad person. Mm, I don't know. This had been coming for a long time. The writing has been on the wall. And that whole time, both you and Cody did nothing. Could have detonated that bomb. Cody knew what the problems in the relationships were, and he just put his foot down and said, mm, no more intimacy, I'm done with you. But you can stay here at this house, and I'll come over you know, every couple of weeks and spend the night in the bed. I mean, nothing will happen. But I'll do that to continue to receive the money that you're putting into the family fund. That, that, that was just priceless when I saw that. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And then Robin goes on. Okay, I'm going to read this verbatim because, again, lovely language. Robin says, and he doesn't want to, he just wants to just go find whatever, you know. And I'm like, um, no, I can't feel like that. That is worse than what Cody said before. Honest to goodness, what do those words mean? Holding your feet to the fire here, Robin. And he doesn't want to... He just wants to just go find whatever, you know? And I'm like, um... No, I can't feel like that. No idea. No idea. He doesn't want to... She didn't finish that thought. He just wants to go find whatever. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thanks for clarifying. That's what he wants to find. We don't know what he doesn't want to do, but we do know what he wants to find, and that is whatever. She goes on, you know, and I'm like, um, no, I can't feel like that. Feel like what? What do you mean? No, I can't. I Makes no sense. Not the brightest bulb in the tanning bed. Suki asks Cody, why do you sabotage yourself? And in his answer, I don't know, this is going to be another grammar thing, but like it, this is more, it crosses over from grammar into pet peeve. Cody says, I'm embarrassed. So you get embarrassed, then you get self-deprecating. You know it's just like bad behavior. You know, these yous. Are you talking about yourself, Cody? Or are we talking about the general world? When you use you, it's supposed to apply to everyone in the population. This situation does not... I cannot relate to you. Don't say you. Not me. No. Never been in this situation. Never will be. I'm not you, Cody. Don't include me in with you. Just say I. Just say I. Talk about yourself, Cody. So the quote from Cody is, I'm, I'm embarrassed. We start with an I. I'm embarrassed. So you get embarrassed. Then you get self-deprecating. You know it's just like bad behavior. Whatever. I, I can't. Like, I'm so over. I'm so glad that we are at the end of this because analyzing his speech and language and his intent. It's maddening. It was fun at first. And there's so much of it. And it continues to go on that I'm at the point now that I'm like, I'm not sure if this is fun anymore for me.
<laughs> oh, I love how he ends it though with it's just like bad behavior. There's that bad behavior again. He talks about Christine had bad behavior. He uses bad behavior to not talk about his kids as much as he talks about his wives that way. Now he's referring to himself as having bad behavior. Bad behavior is our new drinking game. Every time Cody says bad behavior, take a shot. Your bad behavior stops now. And then Cody goes on to say, these are my demons. That's doing something that destroys myself. No follow-up. None. No follow-up question. These are my demons doing something that destroys myself. What? What did you do to destroy yourself? I don't understand. So far, all we've gotten is the fact that you've had thoughts about what life would be like if you left everything behind and started new again. And Robin has said that you pick fights with her sometimes. I mean, what's all the fuss? I mean, I don't know if those are really demons. I mean, maybe your life was too Pollyannish before. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I feel like I am stuttering a lot in these videos in trying to figure out what he's saying. A follow up would have been nice at that point, Suki, I'm just saying. Do your job! And then he gets poetic. <laughs> this is good. He said, Christine's leaving and I'm just angry. A lot of dark winds were going through me. A lot of devil. A lot of temptation. <laughs> what was the temptation that you had? What were the dark winds? What does any of this mean? Was the temptation to get another wife? You know what? Go find another woman. Get another sister wife. That's what Robin wants anyway. She's got no sister wives right now. You're right. I know. She's on a show called Sister Wives, but she has no sister wives. So go get her one. I don't think this is a terrible temptation at all, Cody. I say, go for it. New season. Love to see it. Bring in a new wife. I just want to point out that he says, Christine's leaving and I'm angry and I'm dark and dark winds are going through me and I have all these temptations and all this is a result of Christine leaving. Christine's leaving and... Uh... And I'm just angry. So a lot of dark winds were going through me. Okay. A lot of devil, a lot of temptation. And yet, let me go back to the beginning of just this interview when he said he made that special covenant with Robin about leaving and that after he made it, he went and told his other wives that he made it. And that they, they even got frustrated by like, anybody who wants to leave, you're free to go. He claims he told them, anybody who wants to leave, you're free to go. At the time of Robin coming into the family. Then um, I went to the other wives and said, I have this agreement with Robin. And they even got frustrated by, by like, anybody who wants to leave, you're free to go. And if we go back, season one, he made that declaration on the couch interview, too. Any of my wives are free to go at any time, and if they did, I would buy the house next to me and put them up in it and ask them, what do you need? What can I do for you? You remember that? That didn't come to fruition. But now a wife did choose to leave, and this is the reaction. This darkness, this anger, these devils and demons. I... There are so many lies in the Brown family that... I... It's hard to sift through them all. True words were never spoken. Cody in his interview then says, I would get angry. She would get frustrated. My anger was a turnoff. It was scary. <laughs> Your anger was a turnoff, Einstein. I don't know. Personally, I find anger so hot. Obviously, Cody. Your anger was a turn off. But thanks for sharing. And then Cody says, and the dumb thing is, because I'm so honest that I shared stuff with her that was heartbreaking. I don't know. Again, what? What did you share with her that was heartbreaking? No follow up. Again. He says, I was like, I've been thinking like this. You can only imagine how terrible that was. No, I can't. I can't imagine how terrible it was. I don't know what you were thinking and I don't know what you shared with her. 
So don't say you can only imagine how terrible this was. Can't. Nope. Mm -mm. Give me a little bit of information and then maybe I can relate. And if it was terrible, I can understand. But I, ca I cannot understand. I don't know what you're talking about. There are some things in a man's mind that should never be expressed, he shared. Uh, well, maybe true. What are those things, Cody? I don't know. I'll help you. I'll let you know if you should have kept it inside or if you should have said it, but that you maybe thought about leaving the whole family behind and just walking away from it. There's probably every man in America who's done that at one point in their marriage or not, but whew, if I just walked away from all this and just lived by myself in a van down by the river. Divorced and I live in a van down by the river. And the thought passes and you go on. I don't think there's a man in your situation with four wives, three of them who you have arguments with constantly. No one's going to fault you for thinking, whew, what would life be like if I walked away from all this? Now, if you did walk away from everything, it would be different, but I don't understand. And then Robin's trying to explain where his anger is coming from, right? This is golden too. Another golden nugget. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the laughs. Robin says that Cody is going through and I'm suspicious of women thing because of the divorce. Hmm. He's suspicious of all women because of the divorce, or he's suspicious of the women in the family now because of the divorce, or he's just suspicious of you and you're calling yourself women. I don't, I'm not really understanding how he's suspicious of women and what women he's suspicious of, but she goes on. I work constantly to remind him that not all women are bad. <laughs> Robin. Only, uh, Christine. She's just talking about Christine right there. She's saying Christine is bad. That's mean. I work hard to remind him that not all women are bad. <sighs> what a mean thing to say. She goes on. And I told him, I said, I feel like you're lining up all the women and I'm there with them and you're firing and shooting them all down. Suki, follow up. What women? Why? Follow up question, please. Thank you. With Christine leaving, the writing was on the wall. Season one, episode one, really. She was never happy with Robin coming into the family. And season by season by season, you see how much she's trying, but never really satisfied or happy. And finally, Cody cuts himself off from her kids. He's cruel to her. And he says they're never going to have a marital relationship ever again, but she can stick around. So what, what, what's the problem? And Christine's at fault? Deflect, deflect, deflect. I just wanted to make it clear because I thought I misunderstood what was going on here. Christine's the bad person. Got it. Robin goes on to say, I told him that it's not fair. Just because you're having issues with the other women in your life or a woman or whatever doesn't mean that we're all bad. All right. Well, that was a direct dig at Christine right there. The other women in your life, or a woman. <laughs> Double down! <laughs> or whatever. She's trying to talk around it, but like, I mean, if you've watched any of Sister Wives, we know who she's referencing here. We cut to now a conversation with Janelle where the word bully comes up. And I think there was a cutout also to Christine where Suki is trying to get some clarification and some reaction from them about the fact that Cody says that they have been bullies to Robin. And Janelle says that as a wife, I should be able to talk to Cody about any issues or concerns that I have regarding Robin, but I couldn't say anything against Robin. That bully word again. I'm trying to remember, was it Sister Wives or Welcome to Plathville where I went on my pedestal about bullying and using the term bullying when it's not bullying? I think it was Sister Wives. I'm pretty sure it was Cody and Robin because they're the ones that always claim they're being bullied. And we do cut now levity in the terms of stupidness. Suki asks Cody 
do you have any regrets about not being more equitable of your time with the women? Oh, this ought to be good. And Cody instantly comes back with, oh, I was equitable. <laughs> I was equitable in my time. See, that's where the lie is, Cody says. I had one of my children complaining that I was always at one wife's house. Hey, darn kid. <sighs> Nobody can keep their mouths shut these days. And then he goes off on a tangent. That's that's all he says about it. So he claims he was equitable, that all the wives got equal amount of time, even though in the past he said he wasn't equitable and he knew he was spending more time at Robbins and that he had his office at Robbins and that he had his cars at Robbins. And so that's why he was spending more time. Like he admitted he spent more time there, but we've forgotten all about that. How convenient. Okay, he's saying he spent an equitable amount of time at each wife's house, but he had a child who complained that he was at Robin's house more. That's, that's all the problem was, just this child who didn't know what they were talking about. And then he jumps to complaining about social media and other people and other influences. And he claims that nobody out there in society watching the show and the tabloids on social media like Robin because of things that he has done. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. No. I blame you, Cody, for the things that you did. I blame Robin for the things that she did. And then we get a little bit of the disturbing side of Cody that leaked out because he continued to keep talking. And then that's when the real Cody starts to shine through. And he starts explaining how it makes him feel inside when somebody complains about Robin. Buckle up. There was a shift of blame towards Robin that got to the point where it was making me so angry that I was getting to the point where if you had a complaint about her, I'd be like, shut up, I will punch you in the mouth. Shut up. I want to punch him in the mouth. Oh, and then this is rich. This is really rich. You know, I, I was getting sick of the complaints because it was really obvious to me she was doing nothing but her best to be compliant to what our family structure was. All lies. Their family structure was this close-knit small unit that all lived together. She was never part of that. She had her separate apartment. She didn't join them. Then she had her own separate house. And then she had her own separate mansion. She was never a sister wife. She was just the one he banged the most and eventually the only one he did. Robin never appeared on the show to look like she was really trying to blend in with the family. It looked like she was trying to do some things like watch kids and that to justify the fact that she didn't work and bring in any income. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. And there's a lot of complaining about how the rest of the family isn't embracing her. But what she did to really blend in, I don't know. I haven't seen it. We get some good stuff here. What's going to be the end of this video. And I'll do the second half of this episode later on in the week. I got a crazy week. This Christmas holidays. They should not be putting this during the Christmas holidays. I've got so many parties and meetings and get-togethers and I have to do my Christmas shopping. I have to clean my whole house. I have to finish decorating. I've got the whole family coming and staying here. Like, this is not a good time to have these good episodes from TLC. What terrible planning. Next week is even worse. Kind of getting off topic, sweetie. Christine in her interview says, I've looked back and I've dissected my relationship with Robin. And I remember a few conversations that I had with her where I guess could be interpreted as more aggressive. And then she says this. Robin, one time I offended her with something that I said. She went over to my house. We talked about it for a while. And I thought we were fine after that. And then I heard later about it again and again and again. And I'm like, I thought we were fine. I thought we talked about it and it was over. She can't let it go. She does always want to be a victim. Let's get to that now. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. So Suki says, well, what were one of these things? Follow-up question, 
Good follow-up question. Yes, Suki, yes. Give us examples. She does it with Christine. Why doesn't she do it with Cody or Robin? Give us examples. What do you mean? Be specific. But we do get it from Christine. And she says one of the arguments was over the fact that they took these personality tests and Robin saw her results of her personality test and she didn't like it. Her results indicated that she's the type of personality that enjoys drama. She enjoys being in drama. She likes talking to other people about their drama. She just loves drama. Tell me something I don't know. Quick cut to Janelle. And Janelle said that she remembered that personality test and her results said that she was a diplomat and a peacemaker. And Suki said, do you agree with those results? And Janelle's like, yeah, that's pretty spot on. Then we cut to Mary. And Suki asks Mary, do you remember this personality test? And Mary said, yeah, I remember it. And she said, what were your results? And Mary's like, I don't remember. I, I have no idea what they were. And Suki said, well, do you remember if you agreed with the results? And Mary said, oh, yeah, I remember thinking that, you know, it was pretty spot on and, and that those traits matched my personality. And then Suki follows up with Mary by saying, do you think that the results of all the other sister wives were accurate? And Mary says, yes, I feel like it was fairly accurate. Personality test. I do remember agreeing with my personality test. And did I, you think your other sister wives were described pretty accurately? I felt like it was fairly accurate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's keep going. This is good stuff. Suki asked Robin about this personality test. Robin said, I never took it. <laughs> But do you remember the personality tests? I never took it, but I remember it, yeah. You never took it? I never did. Wait. Some of us did, and I just never did. Huh. She says it emphatically. You know when a lie is coming, she just like throws out an answer like, Boop, never happened. Just like the ring. Oh, that ring was gone. I, I never saw the ring. He got rid of his wedding ring before I even met him. He never wore a wedding ring. Emphatically. Boom. Lie. Here again. I never took the personality test. I, I remember it, but I, I never took it. Lies! The lies! And then she, and she does the same thing she did with the whole uh, ring thing where she keeps talking to try to like couch what she's saying. When she's lying, when she's telling, when Robin's telling the truth, she just answers the question. When she's lying, she goes on and on and on and on and on. Her story becomes more embellished. And that happened right here, just like it did with the ring. She said, I never took it, but I remember it. Some of us did take it. I just never did. Suki said, huh, because Christine said you did take it. And then Robin goes, oh, well, maybe I did. Huh. Christine I mean, they had were mentioned there. that you guys took it, where you guys talk about, like, how, uh, what type of archetype you become, like, you know, oh. who are you? Oh, wait, like, maybe I did. Good follow-up, Suki. High five. Yes. Yes. It was described as you as somebody who liked drama and that you were really upset about it and it kind of created this tension between the two of you. I and don't then, have a memory of okay. this. And then she goes on to say, no, I don't remember taking it. And I don't, um, if there was, um, that's interesting. No, I don't remember taking it. I never okay, filled out okay. questionnaires. Maybe somebody else took it for me. So if somebody was coming up with my personality type, they were taking the test for me. Okay. And making the choices for me and going, oh, well, I think this is who you are. And she's talking hypothetically about like some random person, but then eventually she just goes in and throws out that we know we're all talking about Christine here. And that was when, you know, and if that's somebody doing that, that means, it, like, Christine didn't know me well. She didn't take the time to know me very well. She says, maybe it was taken for me. And then Christine filled it out, but she doesn't, but she didn't take the time to know me very well. <laughs> uh, is liar a personality trait? Because... She would have scored high there. So it's one of my main personality traits. 
So Robin right here is saying she's not agreeing with the results of her test, but she claims she never took the test and she doesn't even know what the answers are on the test. But as she's explaining how she never took it and she didn't know anything about it or maybe somebody filled it out for her, all of a sudden she ends it with, and Christine filled it out, but she didn't take the time to know me well. Oh, you do know your results because she doesn't know you well. So that would justify why you didn't like your results. And according to Christine, this was a big fight they had, but then they talked through it together and they worked it out. But then Robin kept bringing it up again, over and over again. And Christine's like, I thought we talked about this. And Robin claims she doesn't remember any of it. She just lies and lies. Oh, that was good. That ends so good. I know that's not the end of the episode, but that's the end of this because this video is going to be way too long by the time I do the editing and I find all the fun clips to put in in between. Have mercy for me. This is such a busy week and I've got all my kids and spouses and everybody coming to the house because our extended family Christmas is coming up this weekend. All day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and all day Monday. So when am I going to watch the next episode of Sister Wise and get it out to you? I don't know. I might not be able to even watch it until Tuesday. I'm sorry. Family comes first. But then the actual week of Christmas, I will definitely be catching up because it'll all be done. We're literally celebrating Christmas next Monday. I know it's not your Christmas this weekend, but it's mine. So Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone.